It is great to be here, all of us together on this homecoming Sunday, and as Jenny, our our youth reader this morning, uh, lights the chalice, I invite you to join with me in the words on the front of your order of service. Um, They're the words that we learn in the children's and youth program for lighting our chalice, and if if you're one of the youth, you can do with the hand, hand signals with me while we do it. So we say, we light this chalice to celebrate Unitarian Universalism. We are the church and we are the church of the loving heart. This is the church of the helping hands. And good morning again. I think being, being out of hymnals and orders of service is a good sign. It's a good, a good problem to have. Now that we've stepped in, let's go a little deeper. And I, to, to do this, you want to maybe put yourself back when, back when you went to summer camp, if you ever went to summer camp. Growing up, I took swim lessons at summer camp, and I was young. When I was young, I was only allowed in the little kid's part of the pool, the part that was two feet, two and a half, three feet deep where we learned to kick our feet and put our faces in the water. And our teacher told us that it went like this. It went, talk to the fishies. Listen, listen to the fishies. Everyone remember that? I don't know. This was... But beyond the rope, beyond the rope, the older kids played in the deeper water. They jumped off the side of the pool, and their swimming was fast and strong. And I felt motivated to swim well so that I could go and swim with them. So later I passed into the more advanced swimming class and got to go beyond the rope and swim with the bigger kids. There the water was four feet, five feet, six feet deep, so deep that you couldn't stand. So you had to be a pretty strong swimmer. And you found out what it was like to literally be over your head. In the advanced swimmers area, we learned how to do the crawl and the backstroke and the side stroke and the breast stroke. And there I could jump off the edge of the pool to my heart's content. But from that deeper end, I could look and see the next section of the pool, the deep end, where it was 12 feet deep and there was a high diving board. And before I was allowed there to do swan dives and backflips and cannonballs and belly flops, I had to learn yet another set of skills. On Homecoming Sunday, we, like a lot of other UU churches all over our continent, invite people to bring small vials of water from wherever their summer journeys may have taken them. The water might be from the local pool, the swimming hole, the beaches of the Outer Banks. The water might be from a road trip to see family or from the place you recently moved here from. The water might be from the rain barrel in your garden or from the bucket list trip of a lifetime. And truthfully, truthfully, it is most likely that the water that you brought, if you remembered to bring it, was from the water fountain near the restrooms because... (laughs) You forgot to get water wherever it was you were. Whatever. But we merge and we mix and we mingle this water together. We blend it, symbolizing our willingness to share our story, to share our journey, to share our lives, our blessings, and our burdens with the life of this community. And in doing this, we create depth. In college, I worked as a swim instructor, teaching kids how to swim. Talk to the fishies. Listen to the fishies. And a lot of those lessons were about how to help people to relax and feel comfortable in the water. If you're calm and relaxed, you can float on your back. But if you're tensed up, then you'll go under. Long, slow strokes will propel you through the water, but short, choppy strokes will get you tired and not get you where you want to go. 
you first learn to dive by letting yourself just fall forward. In swimming, as in church community, as in relationship, you learn to do these things by allowing yourselves to be vulnerable. And it's that way we move into greater depths in our relationships of love and friendship, in our community and in our faith. When we're in over our heads, we open ourselves up, allow ourselves to be held. And we find ourselves moving towards the deep end. Good morning. I am responsible for the rules portion of the program. (laughs) So these are 12 rules for the whitewater rafter. Number one, decide before you start if you are going to steer from the front or the back. Two, someone has to be elected to call out the directions clearly. Three, take rest in calm places. Four, never stop paddling, even when it seems hopeless. Five, if you get into trouble, don't panic. Six, don't be surprised if the boat you have doesn't go where you want it to go. Seven, on a raft, the more activity on the left, the more it goes to the right, (laughs) and vice versa. Eight, if you go under, let go of everything, and you will float. Nine, everyone paddles, but the current always takes you. Ten, trust the boat. If you are in white water, hold on. Eleven, remember, white water is what you came for, so enjoy it. (laughs) And finally, and this is the most important, twelve. The people in the boat are the ones who will pull you out of the water if you go overboard, and they are also the people with whom you will camp and eat tonight. The instructions for the water ceremony are as follows. We've stepped in, we've uh, drifted into the deep end, we have met our ship's companions, and now in the last part of our service we will, we will take that metaphorical leap. We're going to have, this section is going to start and then we'll kind of move across and we'll get a nice kind of flow a nice current going around the uh our band is going to play for us they're going to play kind of a an upbeat uh number to to keep us moving through um and as you come forward i invite you to hold in your in your mind a reflection of what leap you are taking in your life right now this year um to think about that. There is uh, water. If you brought water, you can pour it in. Um, or we have a pitcher of water here for those who uh, did not. And, and you're invited to, to pour a, a stingy pour so that, so that there's enough for everyone who wishes to pour. And I also have a challenge for you, a challenge for after the service, um, which is after the service, I would like you at coffee hour to approach three different people you don't know and ask them from where they brought their water. So that is the, that's the challenge for after the service. But for now, I invite uh, this side uh, to come forward in turn, pour your water, and uh, let us hold our water ceremony together. <laughs> 